go. Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am Krista Burns, your host here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Um, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event where we cover Commission activities or anything that may be of interest to librarians across the state of Nebraska. Um, we do these every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time and they are recorded so if you can't attend one of our live sessions you can always watch one of our recordings. And we do various things, presentations, interviews, book tours, um, little mini to web tours of different databases and things. And sometimes we have commission staff and sometimes we have guest speakers like we do today, which is great. <laughs> um, so this morning, and I'll actually pass the mouse over to you if you All need right. to use it or not. Um, this morning we do have, as I said, guests here from our Lincoln City Libraries, as you can see from the screen, um, Catherine Kelly and Carol Swanson. Hello. <laughs> um, and they're going to tell us all about the One Book, One Lincoln program that's going on now um, and just a little bit of history about how it all goes. So I am going to hand over to them to go ahead and take it away. Okay. Well, I'm going to introduce myself. I'm Katherine Kelly and I'm a public services librarian with Bennett Martin Public Library. And starting this year, I am the coordinator for the One Book, One Lincoln program. And I'm Carol Swanson. I am supervisor at Gear Branch Library. And I have been involved in our One Book, One Lincoln program at, at one level or, or another since its inception in 2002. Mm -hmm. So it's been a very interesting trip and one that um, we're only looking forward to going on with. Well, we're going to start out today, I think, talking a little bit about um, both the history of One Book, One Lincoln, and um, how it's evolved over the past nine years, and um, also with the things that we have planned uh, in store for 2010 and what's been happening so far. Uh, I think at this point, let me see if I can move on here. Try. There we go. Yeah. Um, just a quick little recap about One Book, One Lincoln and um, its uh, goals. It is now in its ninth year, uh, and it's a community reading program sponsored by Lincoln City Libraries. When it started in 2002, uh, it, the goal of the program is to encourage all adults in Lincoln and Lancaster County to read and discuss the same book at the same time. So it's sort of a community book group. Um, and our goal all along has been to encourage reading and dialogue by creating a community-wide reading and discussion experience. And since Carol's had a long history with it, she can speak to some of the past history of One Book, One Lincoln. And I will be happy to do that. Um, One Book, One Lincoln got its start here in the year 2002, but it got started even before that out in Seattle. And many of you who are listening today are familiar with the um, not only the action figure of Nancy Pearl, but Nancy <laughs> Pearl herself and, person, yes. <laughs> and some of the books that she's written. Um, well, Nancy Pearl and her staff were trying to figure out a way to get people in Seattle more involved with reading. And they came up with an idea. They got uh, Reader's Digest funding and some local sponsors and they launched the um, If All Seattle Read the Same Book. And that was really a tremendous success. And so they continued. And it, it was sort of a, a grassroots movement. Um, people heard of the idea. They thought it sounded good. A lot of people read in book groups. Um, a lot of people shared reading ideas among each other, so a lot of people did end up reading the same book, just not necessarily at the same time. Um, just to give you an idea, when Lincoln um, started doing one book, that was the year 2002, um, there were 63 of these projects in 30 states. So we were, we jumped on pretty quickly. We saw it as being a really great idea, a way to build our readership, build our community, and build on the idea that we wanted the library to be part of the community, not only when the community was in the building, but when the community left the building with items they wanted to read and got together amongst themselves. Um, and it has just taken off. Um, there's also um, the um, 
National um, Endowment for the Arts, who's mm -hmm. got a similar program called the Big Read. Mm -hmm. And so more and more communities and groups are finding that um, reading together and sharing both common and diverse thoughts about what they're reading is a great way to build a community by recognizing where people are alike and bridging where people are different and coming to um, a, a consensus and in a way that it expands their horizon in reading and in thinking. Um, just to go over some of the books that we have done in the past and refresh your memory, um, a little trip down memory lane. In 2002, we read Kent Harreth's Plain Song. He was a former Lincolnite, and he came back and did give an author presentation. Um, for 2003, kind of a, a surprising um, resonance with our community was the book Bel Canto by Ann Patchett. Um, it combined themes of terrorism and operatic music and we had great uh, community participation for that. Peace Like a River explored crime and miracles in Minnesota and South Dakota, and that was a debut novel for an author like Inger that has gone on to be a noted writer. Kite Runner really did strike a chord with our community when it was chosen in 2005. Uh, it was a very timely book, a lot of families were very aware of what was going on um, in Afghanistan and um, Iran, Iraq. They had friends there, they had family there, and also there was just a heightened awareness of the cultures of that country and an interest in learning more. Um, the year after that, we had our first uh, nonfiction book. Devil in the White City, and that was about the 1898 Exposition, World's Columbian Exposition in I Chicago. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I like that book. And, yes. and that one we had a little bit of difference of opinion. It was a book that had parallel stories yeah. about the great progress and, and, and time of invention um, that was centered on that exposition along with the story of um, a serial murderer. And some people thought that that was a great juxtaposition of tempo and character development and um, moving through the story. And other people would say, I could have read just this part about the fair, or I could have mm -hmm. read just this part about the, the serial murders. Um, the year after that, we followed with another um, nonfiction book, The Worst Hard Time, which again had a great resonance with our readers. This amazingly, though some people um, did still have living relatives who had um, gone to the World's Exposition in Chicago in 1898, The Worst Hard Time about the Depression, of course, had many, 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 many more readers who had family or friends who had lived through that time and had their own tales that they could tell about living um, in some of the areas and through some of the um, disastrous events that were described. And I think this one, more than anything, made us realize that um, a lot of people who came to our discussion hadn't necessarily read the book, but they had heard what it was about, mm -hmm. and they came with a relative or a friend who had decided to read the book, and they added to the content of that book. They really enhanced the story um, that Tim Egan had started to tell, and each group that got together actually was their own unique program or discussion depending on who had information to contribute. And it was really um, a, a very, it resounded very well with the community. In the 13th tale, which we are getting to the year 2008, which is not that long ago, 
we sort of veered off of our more serious note and decided to um, read basically what was a, a gothic uh, novel. It was a, a tale that included old crumbling down buildings, the, you know, the, the possibility of ghosts, um, uh, resolution of twin identities, and it took place in England. So again, this was a little bit more of a lighthearted look at reading, and we had a lot of fun with the programs that we did. Groups have a lot of fun, again, veered off into ghost tales or tales about um, twins in the family, things like that. And then last year, the book that we voted um, in, on and read as um, One Book, One Lincoln was People of the Book, which was about the Sarajevo um, Haggadah. And that was a, an ancient, valuable Jewish prayer book. And it traced it, the history from its beginning, from its inception, its artistic creation, um, to the time it was stolen and then recovered. The twist to this is that it took us from a more contemporary time to a time further back, and then to a contemporary time, and then a time further back. You were doing time traveling as you were learning about the book and the people who helped create it, who helped save it, who tried to steal it. So there was a lot of intrigue in there as well as, as world history. Um, and so those, those are the books that we have had the opportunity to read. And I must say that for each of these, the library has reached out to so many different partners in the community and found such generosity and such depth of expertise in our citizenry who are willing to offer their time and their expertise to present a program, to lead a book discussion. And it's always amazing, each new book that we choose as our One Book, One Lincoln brings forward more and more interest from the people in the community to be involved and to um, want to help make it a success. Carol, can I ask too, this yeah. has probably been one of the really great results and the goals of the program too, is not only to have the community as a group reading this book and looking for common themes and learning, but also that we're able to partner with a lot of different organizations oh, and, as you said, tap into local resources and people with expertise to share more about the themes in, and the, the subjects of the books. And it's also not just an opportunity for us to tap into an organization. It's an opportunity for an organization to tap into us. Yeah. It, it goes both ways. We can express an interest in having you support us. But you may say, wow, this is a great opportunity for me. I think mm -hmm. this is the year that my expertise, that my organization, you know, can take that step forward right. and be involved. And I, just a, a short list, Lincoln Arts Council, the Osher Lifelong Learning Institute, the Nebraska Humanities Council has partnered with us. Um, we have had the television radio networks partner with us. We have had independent businesses partner with us, university departments. It just goes on and on and on, which is, is so gratifying. And so we're sort of expecting the same this year. Whoops, moving too fast here. <laughs> um, well, that might be maybe a, a point where we can sort of segue into some of what we've been doing and some of the changes. And one of the things, again, trying to get more community input to this program, um, something that's really worth noting for 2010 is that this is the first year that uh, we are now soliciting from the community to vote for their favorite um, of the five finalists that we've currently uh, been promoting. So this is really the opportunity for the community out of the five finals to say, okay, whether you've liked or 
um, enjoyed, maybe they weren't your favorites in past years, this is your opportunity to tell us which one would you like to see our community um, voting. And so we are in that process right now where beginning in June 1st until the end of July you can cast your vote for one of the five finalists. We'll be talking about those. Um, and you can do that either online through the Lincoln City Library's webpage. Um, there's a spot where you can go to our site. If I can find it here. Well, let's see. If you go to our main webpage right now, we've got right up in the upper right hand corner a vote for your choice. And you can go online right there and cast your vote. It's a really simple survey. Click on the option, the title that you like the best and we'll be tallying those votes at the end of July. So this is something that we're doing in response to um, input and what we're hearing from the community. Um, and so we think you know, that's one of the ways that we're changing the program and people seem to be really excited about being able to do that. You can also um, vote for your favorite either by stopping into any of the Lincoln City Library branches. We've got ballot boxes there. And we have preview events going on where you'll be able to do, uh, do that as well, cast your vote. Um, just a little bit talking about what the selection process, um, how that works, and some of this has not changed much in past years. Right. Generally, at the beginning of the year in January, um, we start soliciting from the community their nominations for the upcoming year One Book, One Lincoln title, and this year that was done up through February 2nd. Uh, once we have all your nominations, and generally, what, there's maybe over 100 nominations for titles, or they pare it down there's, to the top 100? There, there's usually somewhere between, well, close to 200, Okay, wow. is what it is. And some books get nominated year after year, even though they, they don't meet criteria. Some books get nominated year after year just <laughs> because they do. But that is our community's prerogative. It's, it's completely open. If you want to nominate that title every single year, then you nominate. Well, I have one acquaintance who says every year she nominates the Nebraska driving, Driver's License <laughs> Manual because she says it's that a book that awesome. every Nebraskan should uh, read, but it hasn't yet made it to you. I don't know about <laughs> plot, plot theme, theme. <laughs> programming. Well, once we get all of those nominations, um, there is a committee, usually about a dozen people, and it's made up of um, one or two library staff. It's certainly not all library staff, but also community members, so people from the media, from local businesses, educators. Um, this, the board, the foundation. The board. We also have, yes, the mm -hmm. library board and library foundation um, members are represented. And so they're charged with going through this list of nominees, and they read these titles, they discuss them mm -hmm. in depth. Um, and begin evaluating them for this program, keeping in mind the goals of the program. I mean, it's, it's one thing to have a really great book that people would enjoy, but you know, we're looking for something that really is going to be a community building um, process, being able to talk about and learn and, from the and titles. And I think we found out a couple of years ago, uh, with the success of our preview discussions, just how deep the interest is in the process that our committee mm -hmm. members go through to choose um, the five finalists, and then until this year, the finalist book. Um, and so now we have regularly scheduled preview discussions so that those questions can get answered and people can understand um, the kinds of things in particular that people are struck by mm -hmm. when they read a certain book, what touched them, what, what brought a strength out, why they chose that over maybe something else. And I was privy this year to attend the final meeting of the selection committee as they were narrowing down a list of 12 to the five finalists. And you really do see how seriously and thoughtfully yeah. this process is in their considerations of books um, that are going to be pitched to, to the community. Well, they do get that list down to five finalists. And this year that was announced um, at a live event to the public. Um, on Memorial Day at the Mill in the Haymarket. It was a fundraiser for the Foundation for Lincoln Libraries. So that morning we released the five finalist titles and it was publicized in the Lincoln Journal Star. We got a nice front page um, article the following day. And at this point um, the five finalists are now available to be voted upon. Um, we've extended it to a two-month period realizing that a lot of people will want to read these five finalists before casting their vote. It's certainly not a requirement. <laughs> um, you know, if you know one of the titles on that list, you what you know about that book, or if you've read one and you really think it's worthy, feel free to 
to cast your vote. So we'll be taking those votes until the end of July. And then once we tally that up, um, the choice for One Book, One Lincoln 2010 will be announced to the public um, in early to mid-September. Um, after that process, of course, once we know what the book is, we're going to be planning a lot of uh, programming, discussion groups, and we'll be talking about some of those, those other opportunities. But that's the basic timeline. And again, this year, the real change is allowing the public to vote. Well, one you know, thing, you gotta keep talking. One thing Angela. that I wanted people to realize is that sort of behind the scenes, to allow you to get more knowledge about what each book is about, we have Lincoln City Library staff members who are working ever so hard on finding related topics, related book lists, finding information to put up on our Facebook page so that you can see maybe what other communities are reading this, um, interviews with authors, um, reviews of the book, all different kinds of information that really help you put more context around your reading and help you decide, wow, what, you know, what would I rather sit down and talk to my neighbor with, this one or this one, and help you make a, you know, a vote that, that you think is the right one. I have a question myself about the community members. If some, how do you choose who the community members are? And if someone's out there in the community and wants to be part of the the selection, selection committee, do they can they it, just say, "Hey, I want to be involved"? It, it is. That work? It is kind of an honor. Mm -hmm. um, it's a it's a very high profile program yes. in Lincoln, and the fact that it's an honor to be on it, and yet anyone in Lincoln can nominate themselves right. to be on it. Their okay. friend can nominate them to be on it. If they have an interest in reading and they think they would like to be a participant, they simply have to um, get in touch with the administrative offices and let them know, and that would be 4418500, which is the main number, or they can email into um, the, it, probably into um, Catherine or myself, and sure. we will pass the, their name and, and contact information on. Um, a lot of people who think that they are very interested in being on the committee don't realize the commitment yes. to <laughs> the reading or the fact that, yeah. that they might have to read books that they're really not interested in. You know, mm -hmm. maybe right. they're a great yeah. reader, but they only read what they want. They want. Mm -hmm. So before, in fairness to the person and to the committee, um, you know, they are given a good idea of what the commitment is, and then they can decide if they want to pursue that further. And to know, too, that the commitment um, does extend beyond even the selection and the five finalists because many of these folks are really generous with their time in assisting us, for example, with preview events that we have coming up where they'll be talking to the public about the selection um, process and helping to publicize it. So, awesome. so it again, they're really, job. it is a big <laughs> commitment and we're really and, grateful yeah. to the people right. that do. And, and it's a two-year term. Oh, okay. So if they are on it, then they would serve for two years before they would go off of it. And we just have been so lucky to have such great people on and such generous people on these committees. So, and now I've forgotten where we are. Well, part of what I thought we could talk about is what are the five finalists? Oh, right. If we're ready it for might, that at it this might point, be a good idea should we to talk, talk about, about some that. books? Let's okay. Do it. Well, let's move on then. The five finalists for 2010 are The Elegance of the Hedgehog by Muriel Barberry. Now, again, this seems to me like it would be a, a good intergenerational book. Well, there's a couple that actually would, would be that. We'll talk to e about each of them in depth here in just a second. Um, give you a little, little smidgen of a... Uh, uh, idea of what the books are about. Another one, and actually uh, the second book too, is one that's targeted both for young adults as well as adults, is Finding Noof by Zoe Ferraris. Um, a local author, Joe Starita, teaching at uh, the University of Nebraska-Lincoln Journalism Department. I am a man. Um, chief standing there is Jerry Justice. Uh, fourth selection is Loving Frank, a novel by Nancy Horan. And the fifth finalist by T.C. Boyle is The Tortilla Curtain. 
And I do have to say, before we start talking about specifics, I, did, I think the selection committee did a really excellent job this year um, with a selection of books that have real variety. Um, I think many of them have very topical and current event issues. Um, I think it's a nice selection. We've got one nonfiction title, the rest are fiction, but... Um, one comment that I heard from a person who was on the committee was that it was actually a little bit harder this year because in past years on the committee themselves they have wrangled it out and chosen which would be the four finalists and the one book one Lincoln okay. and they thought that that stood out above the other four. This year they felt they had to present five one book, one Lincoln selection. Mm -hmm. Any single one of these books had to be as strong as any other. Mm -hmm. And so that was even a little bit more challenging for them. Mm -hmm. But it allows then us to um, have the public have more feedback and more say in what they're going to be reading. And I would say, you know, the feedback that I've heard so far from readers it is a very mixed yeah. bag. I'm not, I don't know that I see that one is really standing out as a front runner. I mean, there are definite fans of yeah. a variety of these titles. So, I mean, I think there's something here to interest everyone, and the challenge is going to be <laughs> what the community uh -huh. ends up selecting um, as the, the single choice for 2010. Um, the first book, as you were saying, Carol, The Elegance of the Hedgehog by Muriel Barberry. She's a French author. And this, this is interesting because the two protagonists, um, both females living in a sort of exclusive Paris apartment house, one is a 54-year-old um, woman, the concierge of the building, um, who very much understands her role and stays in the background. And, you know, it's kind of like the doorman mm -hmm. in New York City. She accepts <laughs> packages, um, mm -hmm. doesn't speak too directly to the um, people living in the house. She knows her place. But, you know, she also has some secrets. There's a bit of a secret life here that she's um, very, um, very sure about not showing um, anyone else in the house. Um, chapters uh, by Renee Michelle and her uh, view are also counterpointed with that of Paloma Joss, who's a 12-year-old girl who's very intelligent, very precocious, but um, also pretty jaded about life and adults and is pretty bent on committing suicide before she turns 13. Um, it's not, I mean, I wouldn't say it's a dark book, um, but, you know, she's very self-assured and decides to sort of um, jot in her journal her impressions um, until she decides to commit suicide in the summer. Uh, but you really get to see a picture of these two females, um, their experience with other people living in the house, their approach towards life. There's dashes of philosophy in here. Um, it's very charming, and ultimately what happens when a Japanese wealthy businessman um, takes up residence in the building and how uh, his introduction really affects both of these characters. And I thought it was, you know, very charming, um, really enjoyed the book, and, and I've heard, this is one that I feel people are really polarized. I've heard people say they really enjoyed it. Um, it was New York Times bestseller. Um, it's certainly gotten a lot of critical review. Um, well, I think it's a book that even though it takes place in another country, it's very easy to transpose some of the, the elements that make it so important and so interesting into many of our own life situations. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of issues and, of class right. here and appearances mm -hmm. and, um, you know, one station in life. Um, and also, you know, what you're destined to be. And well, it also, it also brings me to the point with their, with the um, new tenant, um, our idea of what is a tipping point. Things go along in equilibrium. Will something happen? Will something not happen? This happens, but then that balances to happen it. And then you have that one unexpected element. Mm -hmm. And which way will it tip mm -hmm. the outcome? And so... Um, but it, it's yet yeah, it's a very um, it's focused on the on the character very much very much. Um, the second choice, Finding Newt by Zoe Ferraris. This is a first novel, and it's going to appeal to people who like mysteries because there is mm -hmm. indeed 
um, a mystery um, in this novel. It's a first novel by the author who was previously married to um, a Palestinian Bedouin man. So she has some experience in that culture. And that's, I think, one of the really fascinating things about this book. The storyline is that there is a 16-year-old girl from a wealthy family who is found uh, drowned in the desert um, in Saudi Arabia. And um, a family friend who's very devout, a Muslim, um, he's a desert guide, is asked by the brother of this girl to try to figure out what happened. Um, he teams up, unusually enough, with a woman, which, you know, talking about the Muslim culture and Saudi Arabia, mm -hmm. um, how they managed to team up, both he and this woman, who's the fiancé of his friend, um, who also has experience as a medical examiner. I mean, it's fascinating, a uh, really interesting look at Muslim culture of how gender affects things and how people find ways in that culture to interact, um, you know, in a society that's not very receptive of that. Um, it's also a very interesting mystery. The characters in this, I think, are really wonderful, and, um, you know, you find them very well, I think it also, human. It also sort of shows where the twain shall meet between ancient culture and new technology. Absolutely. Where um, you have some knowledge applied to a situation. If that knowledge had not been available, then there would have been a totally different understanding of an event. Mm -hmm. And again, it this was, as you said, written to appeal to both young adult readers and adult readers. And I think it focuses on the fact that people are more and more wanting to know why, how. You see that with the interest in genealogy and going back, missing persons, cold cases, you know, applying new technology to something that has not been able to be explained before. And that's fascinating in a, in a very ancient mm -hmm. culture like this mm -hmm. with right. real long-standing traditions, mm -hmm. how you yeah. see things like GPSs and young girls who wear burkas right. during the day but can do jet skiing <laughs> around their family's island. I mean, so there's a lot of juxtaposition in it. And I, th I mean, I found, found it really fascinating and learned a lot about this culture. And again, it really puts a human spin on it, too. You, you're not seeing stereotypes and, um, you know, you feel like you're really seeing inside life um, in that country. Uh, the third one, and again, this is the nonfiction title um, represented in the five finalists, and also one with a really strong Nebraska connection uh, by Joe Starita. I am a man, Chief Standing Bear's Journey for Justice. Um, this is a fascinating chronicle about a period in Nebraska history. Um, looking at this Ponca chief, his uh, tribe and his people, very peaceful, living in the Niobrara River Valley, were forced uh, to relocate to uh, Indian Territory in Oklahoma in 1877. Um, tragically, uh, I mean, the whole incident was tragic. Uh, later, his only son passed away, and this was the son that he, he had understood, Chief Standing Bear, that they really needed to bridge these two different um, peoples, the, the white people as well as the native people, and so he had really positioned his son to become educated. He saw him as being the bridge between these cultures. And unfortunately, when his son passed away, he made the promise to return his uh, bones to the ancestral lands. And so he and a group of his people attempted to return back to uh, the Niobrara. Well, that uh, they were arrested. There was a court case. And it's a really fascinating period. It's also very inspiring when you see how some of the people in Nebraska, in Omaha, Again, different cultures really stood up to support Standing Bear and his people, um, you know, in sort of a landmark case where uh, it was quite surprising. Well, I mean, I think it, it reflects, too, what's going on in, in several different um, instances where relics of ancient civilizations, which were once considered sort of trophies or even important scientific discoveries and housed in museums, are being recognized as the sacred belongings of a people and need to, they retain the ownership mm -hmm. and they retain the right to determine what happens to them. I mean, I think that it, in, in this era when we look so much at, at human rights mm -hmm. all over the world, this is our little chapter 
you know, how it developed, how it was handled, what we can learn from it, and how we can go on and build a better way to live with each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's an excellent um, study of human mm -hmm. rights, and it's in our own backyard, which is really exciting. And a, a lot of people, I'm just going to say, think that, oh, it's nonfiction, it's going to be hard to read, it's, I don't read nonfiction. Oh, it's very readable. It is and, very mm -hmm. readable. It is, it, you get caught up right away. Absolutely. Um, another popular book, Loving Frank, a novel by Nancy Horan. Um, this is a very well-researched um, historical novel that's based on the relationship between the architect Frank Lloyd Wright, who most of us are familiar with, at least to some extent, um, and the long-term affair that he had with a woman, Mayma Borwick, uh, sorry, Borthwick Cheney, um, they were both married when they met. Um, in many ways, I think they felt that they were soulmates. Um, intellectually, they shared many things. And this relationship that they had um, was really scandalized. I mean, it, you know, I see a lot of correlations between the fascination with celebrity now mm -hmm. and everyone's personal lives mm -hmm. and being in the tabloids. I mean, this was going on at the turn of the century as well. Um, so where she has not had a lot of attention in the history books, um, and is sort of a footnote in Frank Lloyd Wright's um, life, this novel really serves to illuminate her and the feminist that she was, the intellectual that she was, and the real struggles that she had with um, motherhood and having this love affair. And, I mean, it culminates in a, a very... Um, intense ending, um, very readable, very interesting, and I think of interest for people, you know, certainly in the Midwest and those familiar with uh, Frank Lloyd Wright as well. And even thinking about in the time that they were having this relationship, what would have happened to the social standing of, you know, Frank Lloyd Wright's wife, his children, mm -hmm. um, the family itself, the architectural firm, what would have happened to the family of Mama Borthwick, you know, it, it was much more ruinous. It, it was much more long-lasting because people were not being hit constantly with new things happening that left their mouths hanging open. Mm -hmm. We didn't have the paparazzi. We didn't have as many exciting, outrageous things going on. And then you think, what if this had happened today when we do have the paparazzi and the Internet? Well, it sure would have been out there, and there, there may have been positive things that came out. You know, for instance, the fact that you can have um, relationships that bring positive as well as negative. If someone has a very strong stand and are very well educated on a topic, they may not ever have been known except for their liaison with a more popular mm. person. And yet because of that, they themselves have a launch and a voice. So, interesting. And then the fifth title up for consideration as a finalist is The Tortilla Curtain by T.C. Boyle. Um, this is one of the books that actually has been selected for, oh, at least half a dozen uh, one-book programs throughout the country and other mm -hmm. communities. And, I mean, it certainly is very topical. I mean, what's going on in Arizona right now, in Fremont right now, they're looking at um, making right. changes, yeah. um, the whole issue of immigration, illegal immigration. Um, and in this book, there are two couples whose lives sort of collide. They come from literally. totally different, yeah, literally <laughs> collide, um, come from totally different, different uh, statuses. Um, a very wealthy liberal couple who, you know, eat plenty of fiber in the morning and run and recycle uh, Delaney and Kyra Mossbacher who live in Topanga Canyon in what becomes a gated community. Um, well, they have a run-in um, with one of the pair of a couple, Candido and America, um, a pair of um, illegal aliens from Mexico who are actually living um, in the canyon, um, having a hard time even finding food, much less work. Um, so it really shows uh, these two different dynamics. And, I mean, it's not a very one-sided book. I mean, I would say looking at it, it does explore a lot about the whole issue of illegal immigration, um, border patrols, <laughs> um, creating gates around your community, locking people out. Um, and I think throughout it's sort of told with T.C. Boyle's kind of... Uh, 
Oh, he has a very wry eye, so. Mm -hmm. He definitely puts a face on what a lot of people see as a problem mm -hmm. in a box. And then as you look at the faces, it comes out of the box and you begin to see that there are many facets to the problem. There are, you know, any number of solutions that people might find. Um, it's just, it's really a very moving, uh, it really strikes you. And again, very ripe for discussion, yes. I would think. So those are the five finalists that we're asking the community to vote upon. One thing to know is, you know, we try to make sure that these titles are available in many different formats so they're accessible to readers. Of course, they're all available in print format, and we have lots of copies at Lincoln City Libraries, although you may have to put your name on a reserve list. It's free, though, to reserve a copy. Um, nearly all the titles are available as unabridged audiobooks on Compact Disc, so for those of you who like to listen to your books, um, they are available at the libraries. And also, Lincoln City Libraries offers um, downloadable digital, digital audiobooks um, through our website. And nearly all of these titles are also available in that format, so you can download them to your MP3 player or your computer and, and listen to them. And again, for those people who um, are possibly needing to have a larger type and can't find it, mm -hmm. this would be just the excellent opportunity to grab a grandson or a grandchild and say, you know, hey, show me how to download this from right. Overdrive. Because I can tell you, it is so wonderful to use downloadables. And we're and happy so the libraries, easy. too, to, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to show it, you the yeah. stuff. Right. I, I mean, a, no skips, no missing pieces. You don't no, have to worry about leaving that disc right. in your CD player at home when you return it to the library. Right. <laughs> it is and, a, a I mean, yeah, format. and you can listen to it on the computer or take it with you. It's Absolutely. just it's a really great option. Um, one other option that we have for the community is something we call Book Club in a Bag. Um, and the five finalist titles are available in this format as well as other popular books. And just getting some feedback recently, I've heard from a lot of people that they there are book clubs that take advantage of this. Um, what it is is you get ten copies of a single title in a book bag plus some starter discussion questions and information about the author. These can be checked out for an eight-week period. There are no renewals. Um, and you can find them in the Lincoln City Libraries catalog by searching with the subject equal to book club in a bag. And it's a really great opportunity for your book club to check out multiple copies, and that way you'll all have one to read and discuss at your book club. Now, you can also, even if you choose to check out book club in a bag, that doesn't mean that you can't take advantage of asking a Lincoln City Library staff member to come and facilitate your book discussion. It just means that it's all put together and you all have that book at the same time. Absolutely. Well, and some of the things that we're doing during this preview period, um, while we're allowing voting for the five finalists, uh, traditionally we've done this in the past, we have preview events so that readers can learn more about the five finalists and also learn more, as you said, about the selection process and the selection committee. So right now we've got four events scheduled at some of our local booksellers. The first one's coming up tomorrow evening on Thursday, June 17th at the Barnes & Noble Bookstore on O Street. Um, also the University Bookstore on the UNL campus and the Student Union will have a lunch hour event on Tuesday, June 22nd at 1230. Uh, the Barnes & Noble at South Point has an event coming on Sunday, June 27th at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And then downtown at the Novel Idea Bookstore, that'll be on Wednesday, June 30th at 7 p.m. And at all of those events, we'll have representatives of the selection committee um, as well as a Lincoln City Libraries representative. So you'll get to learn more about the whole process and learn some more about the five finalists. And hopefully that'll, you know, help you make your decision. And again, if you happen to have a conflict with that time, all of these will be podcast and edited and available right. on our website. And so you can, you know, go to a couple, listen to a couple podcasts and, you know. And I should yeah. mention that at all of those events, as well as um, some of our outreach events where you can visit our Lincoln City Libraries booth, we have actually a ballot box and ballots there. So if you prefer not to vote online and something inspires you and you're ready to vote, um, at that point, you'll be able to cast your ballot there. 
Um, we do have a booth at Jazz in June. We just had a really great night last night after being rained out on the 1st of June. But we returned, and it really is great to get feedback from the community and see how many people know about this program and are interested to learn about it's the voting. It's great to, to get out and say hi and see people that you usually see just in the library out, out in their and about, other life. Right. Yeah. So you should be able to catch us at the final Jazz in June on Tuesday, June 29th. Look for our booth um, in the market area outside between the or by the lead center. Um, we also will be at the Haymarket Farmers Market in Lincoln on two Saturdays, one in June 24th. So you'll still be able July. to cast your July 24th. You'll be able to cast your vote then. And then once the final selection has mm -hmm. been announced, we'll be at um, that location on September 18th. So we'll have more information uh, for readers there. Um, you can also listen to radio. We'll uh, be on Friday Live on NET Radio talking about the program with William Stieber on Friday, June 25th. And we should have an upcoming KFOR book chat with our own Lisa Voss from Lincoln City Libraries. And then I think you're also planning to do the Five Live with Diane Gonzalez with a, yes, we're a also discussion scheduling panel. right a taping that'll that, be on City TV. What so. is amazing is how many people you hear from that watch those. Mm -hmm. You know, you look in the listings and you see when is that going to show, and it's like oh, and people watch. They love those. Right. They they really like to to get that back and forth between Diane and the panel. Well, and that's something that um, Carol has mentioned, too, is that private discussion groups have really become an important part for us um, about getting out information about one book, one Lincoln, and serving the community. And so we do have a link um, on our website if you want information about um, the events. You can request online. Leave us your phone number and email. There's a space on the form. If you want a facilitator to attend um, an upcoming private book group or if your organization has a meeting, um, we'd be happy to try and schedule a staff member to come and help facilitate discussion uh, for your group. So that's uh, another program one, that we have that's been successful. One thing I'll just mention there is a lot of book groups fear that because they're working in a different timeline than we are, that they're too late or too early to schedule a one book, one Lincoln discussion. And we just finished in the end of May the last One Book, One Lincoln 2009 previous. discussion. So if you're not meeting until so, after the holidays, so that's okay. okay. We'll, we'll be happy to come talk to you right. about it and, and uh, share information and, with you. And then also some folks have already read the One Book, One Lincoln selection mm -hmm. by the time it's been announced and they feel they don't want to discuss that again, but they would like to discuss one of the others. And we can generally provide someone who can lead that discussion as well. And then the other big component, once the book has been selected and we announce that to the public in September, of course, we will have community-wide programming. Um, either community discussion events, um, also programs talking about the themes, bringing in experts. All of this is dictated by what the selection is. Mm -hmm. um, but you can be looking for that, and we'll be announcing that on our website, through our One Book, One Lincoln Facebook group, on Twitter, and throughout press. So you'll want to keep watching. Um, in mid-September, mid we'll start announcing those events that will be happening into October and early November. And that is an important thing. We hope that you will visit us online. Our One Book, One Lincoln website address is up there. And there's all sorts of information. As we were uh, talking about earlier, we have everything from a spot where you can vote for your choice. Um, you can visit the One Book page. And here's the page we have right now for our five finalists with a link to our Facebook page where you can continue discussion and talk to other people that are fans of the program. Um, share your thoughts as you're reading the books. What do you like or not like? Um, you'll see upcoming events being posted there. We've also got a list here, and this will be continually updated, so it's a good place to bookmark and keep visiting um, as we're adding events and other opportunities to learn more about the books. So do visit us um, on site or on Facebook, where we've got a nice active group here and lots of discussion going on. Um, in addition to that, Twitter is a great place. We're always announcing what's happening with the libraries, including One Book, One Lincoln. So make sure that you're online with us at all spots. 
Um, we'd be happy to take questions for right now. If you do uh, need more information, please don't hesitate to contact myself or Carol Swanson. Um, you know, we're happy to share our experience and information and if you have ideas. Um, and Carol, do you have uh, Again, something else before we, if there's questions to open up? I think that this is <clears throat> one of the most um, opening up experiences that we have actually um, created at Lincoln City Libraries. And the more we open up, the more our community understands that the library is about them. We are not um, serving ourselves. We are here to serve the library. We're here to evolve our programming to reflect what their needs are, what their likes are. Um, over the past eight years, our programs have, have evolved and changed. We've included, excluded, because we've seen what the public wants or doesn't want. So this is very much where we want your input, your participation, because without you, without you the reader, there is no one book, one Lincoln. Well, that's right. It's not a library program. It's a, it, community, it's a community program, and that's why we're really looking for and input from the, from the community. We want you to, you know, share your information with us. From the first book, from the first step, we have just continued to grow and learn from each year's reading activities. And that's what we hope for this year is that more and more people, you know, get with the program <laughs> and pick up a book, talk to a neighbor, find out what's going on, and join in. And, I mean, we're happy for new opportunities if your organization or group or whatever social <laughs> um, circle you're in has an idea about how to, you know, discuss one book, what sort of presentation you'd like or information. Um, you know, Carol's been saying great ideas like, you know, if you have a block party, maybe we can build a one book, yeah. one Lincoln theme around it. Um, sure. You know, great. anything that you could the community a wants to use. game mm -hmm. about the one book, one Lincoln. Um, there's all kinds of, of ideas that can come out of this that don't have to be a formal program or everyone has to do it. Um, everyone can have their own idea. Mm -hmm. it, it is your one book, one Lincoln. And as we were talking earlier, I mean, you know, don't feel that there's a lot of um, restrictions on this. We no. want you to come to the events and learn. If you haven't read the book, if you don't like the book, you're free to <laughs> that's, share that's your opinion. That's one thing we were talking um, <laughs> about was I said, uh, make sure and tell people, you know, what if I've read the book, and I don't like the book. Should I come, come to, to a discussion? Yeah. And it's like, absolutely. absolutely. It's a discussion. You know, we, that's what makes We learn discussion. from each other. It right. is people who like the book, sort of like the book, sort of don't like the book, really like the book, <laughs> like the characters, don't like the characters, like the plot, but not the characters. You know, it does not matter, you know, what you think of it. What matters is that you're willing to come and share what you think of it. It'd be a pretty boring book group if you're playing. Oh, oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. It's great, great. We're going to find it. And people, <laughs> who, bring up the and people yeah. who have not read it at all, come and sit down and listen. And you may find that you have a comment to make whether you have read it or not because you know something about the subject. Right, your yeah. perspective. And, and, and you, you may, may have be encouraged to, to read it. Mm -hmm. We do have a quick question. Okay. Um, is there now in Twitter, for example, they have hashtags that things are tagged with. Do you we know. have one for the? I one think book we Lincoln? could develop one. I mean, our shortcut we always use is O B O L uh -huh. internally. One book, yeah. one Lincoln. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, we'll input yeah. hashtag O B O L okay. is okay. An excellent there idea. O B O L. O B O L. So one book, one Lincoln. So if you are doing anything on Twitter, use that the hashtag, and then O B O L will work for that. Um, there was the one book, I don't know if you heard about the one book, one Twitter. Yeah, we did, yeah. yeah. Have you I'm participated? I've been reading it, yes. I forgot what I'm is a little the behind. Choice. It's American Gods by Neil Gaiman. That's right. Okay. Well, Neil um, I'm a little behind, okay. but I'm, I'm reading it. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. Um, but they had, that's where I first saw them. They had a hashtag for that's it. That's right. right. Great. Okay. O-B-O-L for the, and any discussion you have online anywhere, you can just tack that on and we'll yep. find it. That's Great. Wait, anybody have any other questions? Questions, comments, suggestions, ideas. Oh, looks like <laughs> Sorry, you guys are so good. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
well, do to check us out online, and yeah, we'll be uh, and share your input. Send us an email if you you know have uh, ideas, uh, suggestions. Um, and all of the when the recording is put up on our website, all of the um, links that were on that previous slide will be included as well. Great. So um, you'll be able to just click on them and get to them, so you didn't have to worry about scribbling them down off of the screen there. Or anything. Super. But they'll be the whole PowerPoint presentation will be up there. The links will be up there, um, and this recording will be out there. So. Anything else, we all? No, but thanks, Everybody. Krista, yeah, thank and you. the Library Commission for letting us talk about One thank Book, One you. Lincoln. Well, we love you know, promoting anything that's going on in the state or even our local down here well, about libraries. And, and it's a great, I will say, it's a great time to get out there, start looking for the One Book, One Lincoln, because it is mm -hmm. summer reading at the library. You're yes. taking your kids there. You know, your kids are volunteering there. Maybe you're volunteering there. Now is the excellent opportunity. We have an adult reading program going on that mm -hmm. you could read all of the One Book, One Lincoln nominees. And, and also the, qualify to complete the that's right. reading program. And I, I mean, I'd also encourage you know, other Nebraska communities mm -hmm. to think about doing their own that's One Book one, yeah, one program. Right. Guys on. Yes, this is obviously all about the program in Lincoln, but the idea is hopefully being the library right. commission. Right, maybe mm -hmm. other community. communities out mm -hmm. there will see what you're doing, see right. how it can be done, and then follow suit as yeah. well. And there is links on our page, too, to the, the national site, too, where you can look and see what other one book right. communities have done with their programs and and book selections so yeah I'd encourage um, other Nebraska communities to think about it it is a very flexible program yes. depending on how large or small mm -hmm. or who's going to be in the group you can um, formulate it to be what you want it to be mm -hmm. Good. okay well thank you very much thank you everyone thank you. for attending um, We'll just wrap it up then, and I hope you'll join us next week when our topic will be our, actually, the cataloging librarian from here at the Library Commission, Emily Nimsikant. We'll Yay, talk about Emily. How, <laughs> how to catalog a kit. Um, apparently, this is a request she's had from some catalogers that it's a, it's a special thing to do, mm -hmm. and so she's going to do a session for us next week on that, um, next uh, Wednesday, June 23rd, yes, 10 a.m. Okay. Right. Well, okay. thank you very much. We'll see you at the library. Bye-bye. <laughs>